What's up YouTube? Welcome back to a new video. It's been a while, but I'm going to be discussing the recent Ranger news and, you know, things that have happened with the draft, trades, all that. And in the background, I'm just going to be playing a play now game with the Rangers against NHL 21. I'm playing this in EA Play so you guys could get a first look at this game. It's pretty good and I when the game comes out and updated rosters come out, expect the uh, uh, franchise and I also started my be a pro and I'll maybe post some be a pro but let's get into the Ranger news going back to all the way from the trade that sent Mark Stahl to Detroit along with a second round pick in next year's draft for future considerations this is obviously just a cap dump on the Ranger side it gives them a it frees up 5.7 all of 5.7 of Stahl's contract for the Rangers to possibly to use to sign their RFAs, and obviously they haven't signed any of the um, big ones yet, and we'll get back to the RFAs. But Mark Stahl, obviously, a longtime Ranger, it sucks to see him go, but you know, it's we we had to get rid of the cap, and uh, we have some guys on the left side who are on the come up, like Keandre Miller and Libor Hayek, and also Tarmo Ronanen, who might even crack the lineup. So Mark Stahl, he's been all, you know. Everyone hated on him, but he's been really good playing with Tony D'Angelo for the past year, year and a half, last year also. So, thank you, Stalzy, and hopefully, he ha maybe he might even come back after next year. We'll see. And speaking of longtime Rangers, the Rangers bought out the last year of Henrik Lundqvist's contract. Um, obviously, there was a report saying that they didn't want to go three goalies, and... They didn't see. I knew that they never wanted to trade Georgiev. I think they want to go Georgiev and Shesterkin as their one-two punch. And you know, I thought maybe they would go three goalies for one more year. I thought even if Lundqvist played out his contract, he w they wouldn't resign him. So I saw it coming, but obviously this gives the Rangers a little bit more money, but it also creates more dead cap for next year, which. I think might affect their cap, but we'll have to see when the time... Or, I think it will, but we'll see what the Rangers do when the time comes. Obviously, who actually just scored. Yes, but actually, let's not get into free agency yet. Going to the draft now. Um, the Rangers, of course, selected Alexi Lafreniere first overall. He actually just signed a contract, I believe, two days ago. His entry-level deal, and he will be wearing number 13 when next season approaches. And, uh... Also in the first round, they moved up from the 22nd spot to 19 with a trade with uh, Calgary, if I'm not mistaken. I don't really, I'm trying to remember because it's been a few weeks. Um, they sent the 22nd pick along with a third round pick. I think they got, uh, they got it in the, I think the maybe Jimmy Vesey pick. They got it from Buffalo maybe. I'm not totally sure on that one. It was the 71st overall. So, and then they also, and then they, Steps to the podium, and they selected uh, Braden Schneider, a big defensive, physical defenseman who many thought they maybe would go center. I thought they would maybe go um, Hendricks LaPierre, but he actually went to the Capitals. But I think they don't really care what anybody else says. They want to continue to build that defense on the right side is stacked, obviously, in obviously with prospects and also on the team. So we'll have to see how he fits in down the road. And also, I don't really remember you know, much of the other players they picked. They took a couple goalies, a couple wings, a center from Sweden. But they also traded Elias Anderson, the disgruntled prospect, for a second-round pick. That they Then they took William Cooley, I believe. So Elias Anderson obviously was a bust for the Rangers. Not a bust yet because he's still a good player, but for the Rangers, complete bust in my opinion. I thought he had promise. I just think they kind of misused him, but there really wasn't any room for him in the lineup, you know. So we'll see how he does in uh we'll see how he does in uh, Los Angeles. Now going to free agency, obviously the Rangers really weren't expected to make too much, too big of a moves. I thought they should, they were just going to focus on the R, the RFAs they have. But speaking of the RFAs, they actually did sign Phil DiGiuseppe to a one-year deal worth 700k. He obviously was a good depth forward for the Rangers. But Brendan Lemieux, Alexander Georgiev, Ryan Strom, and Tony D'Angelo have all filed for salary arbitration. And I think Tony D'Angelo is the first one up. First one coming on October 20th. So we'll see if a deal 
deals get done before those because that's usually what teams try to do. But it seems like the Rangers, I don't really don't know. I don't know if maybe, because they have plenty of cap. Maybe, I have no idea what's going on. Um, but Rangers, of course, signed a, some free agents. They did sign, I think, they signed a couple AHL guys, a couple guys for maybe um, the expansion draft next year, like Keith Kincaid. Um, but also one that really made Ranger fans go crazy on Twitter was signing defenseman Jack Johnson to a one-year deal worth $1.15 million. Obviously, analytically, I think Jack Johnson was the worst defenseman and poss- worst defenseman in the league. I'm not a really big analytics guy, but, uh, you know, I, I like to watch the player. You know, I think analytics is kind of BS in my not, – not really BS, but I don't know. I don't really see a purpose in it, to be honest with you. But uh, I think Jack Johnson could fit in well. I think he might probably be maybe – it really depends. It dep- I think the sign really is just in case, say, Keandre Miller needs um, – needs uh, what's it called – year in the HL, maybe Libor Hayek needs another year, but as of right now, the left side is Lindgren, Smith, and uh, Lindgren, Smith, and um, Jack Johnson, and then you also have Keandre Miller and Libor Hayek in the system. So, Rangers, of course, lost um, long-time two-way wing in Yasser Foss. He signed a three-year deal worth $2 million AAV with the Carolina Hurricanes. I think the Rangers just weren't committed. That's what Jeff Gordon said. He wasn't really... Oh, what a tip. He really wasn't liking the term I'm because of they're going to have to pay players bonuses in the next few years. Uh, maybe they maybe they offered him like a one-year deal. But uh, obviously, Esper Files has been my favorite player. Um, probably for... Ever since the President's Cup winning team. I actually met him this year. He's actually a very nice guy. Um, and, you know, for him to win the Players Player of the Year award almost every single year, I can see why. And he's hell of a t- hell of a player. And I think Carolina really got a steal, only paying him 200 k more a year than what he was making. So I hope he has for Foz does well. Hope he doesn't beat us. Hope Carolina doesn't beat us in a – he doesn't beat us in a playoff series. But that we'll have to see. So – I believe I covered everything, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think I'm missing anything. Obviously, we'll have to see what goes on with the Rangers' um, RFAs. Well, this, that's really what we're all waiting for, and that's what I've been waiting for, really. I think I've covered everything. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of signings, a lot of some good big trades. Obviously, Petrangelo to Vegas, Tory Krug to San, St. Louis. Um, Josh Anderson for Max Domi. Trade went down. So a lot of things went down. But uh, I believe that is all I wanted to cover with the Rangers. I believe that is it. Obviously, uh, what's next to the Rangers, like I said, I think they just need a, are going to see who they want to bring back. I really think Yorgiev, well, now that they got rid of Lundqvist, I think Yorgiev and Brandon Lemieux are pretty much guarantees. I think Tony D'Angelo is a guarantee, but I think Ryan Strom is the biggest biggest um question mark just because one at the draft well one he was the last player for them to qualify tony d'angelo i think was the first and um he was qualified yeah he was so it seemed like they want d'angelo to stay but uh strom was qualified like last minute because they were going to see if they could trade him or possibly get another center but i saw a rumor that they kicked tires on a I think Mikhail Granlin. So we'll have to see how maybe they give him an offer. We'll see what happens. I think Ryan Shum's the biggest what uh, question mark. I think they might be. I think I saw it. They might be discussing a one year deal, which I think a one or two year deal would be good because obviously we'll have to see how he plays. Wow, what a shot. How he plays yet again. He did play good last year when he came over and then had a career year playing with Panarin. So we'll have to see. But I believe that is all I have to cover with the Rangers. It's been a emotional, you know, getting rid of three uh, long-time players, but also bringing in a lot of young talent. Of course, it's been an exciting offseason, but a very emotional offseason too. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they do with their RFA. So I hope you guys enjoyed. 
Um, I only, I think I only have like an hour left on this trial, so maybe I'll get out a be a pro, a be a pro episode. But franchise will have to wait until they update the rosters because I don't want to create, you know, that's a big thing. But they'll probably, we'll have to see what they do. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one.